Hello there students and friends. Welcome to the second part of my lecture series on inductance. In this episode, I will be discussing RL circuits or resistor inductor circuits. So just hang on, watch and learn. A typical RL circuit is one where a resistor and a coil or inductor are connected in series to a source of EMF such as a battery, as shown in the diagram. At the start or at time t equals zero, the two switches S1 and switch S2 are open. In closing switch S1, the current increases from zero to a maximum value. The presence of the inductor will slow the growth of the current. And as explained in episode one, the rate of increase of current causes a self-induced EMF in the coil, thereby storing magnetic energy in the inductor. The inductor, therefore, slows the growth of the current when the circuit is completed. When S1 is open and S2 is closed, current still moves from points A to point B and from point B to point C, but is now decreasing, causing the energy in the inductor to be transferred to the resistor. Take note, it is the resistor that dissipates the energy into heat. An ideal inductor with negligible resistance in the coil of wire does not dissipate energy into heat. The energy from the inductor is simply transferred to the resistor that is in series with it. The potential difference across a resistor depends on uh, the current, whereas the potential difference across an inductor depends on the rate of change of the current and not on the current per se. So as shown in this first or letter A caption, the resistor with current I flowing from point A to point B, we have the potential drop okay, from point A to point B. This means that the potential difference B of AB is greater than zero or the potential difference is positive. Now, If the current that passes through the inductor, okay, like what is illustrated in caption letter B, uh, the current still moves from point A to point B, but the current is constant, all right? So, because the current is constant or steady current, there will be no induced EMF. So the potential difference B of AB is equal to zero.
encryption letter C, there is now an increasing current passing through the inductor from point A to point B. And hence, the potential drops from point A to point B. And we say that the potential difference V sub AB is greater than zero or it is positive. And finally, as shown in caption letter D, when the current that's pa passing through the inductor from point A to point B is decreasing, right? the potential increases from point A to B, which means that the potential difference B sub AB is less than zero or it is negative. So checking your understanding, let's now answer question number one. In the circuit diagram shown here, what are the algebraic signs of the potential differences P sub AB and B sub BC? Here's point A and that's point B. So B sub AB pertains to the potential difference across the resistor big R, while B sub BC is the potential difference across the inductor capital L. Okay, for the two cases, letter A, when switch S1 is closed and switch S2 is open. And the other case is letter B, when switch S1 is open and switch S2 is closed. Okay, in letter B, the current is still flowing in the direction shown here in this diagram, meaning from point A to point B to point C. The answers to this question, for case letter A, when switch S1 is closed and switch S2 remains open, we say that the voltage or the potential difference across AB, we denote that with this symbol for the potential difference across the resistor R. We say that it is greater than zero or is positive, and that the potential difference across points B and C, meaning across the inductor, is also greater than zero or is considered positive. Now, for case Letter B, okay, in case letter B, uh, when the switch S1 is uh, open and switch S2 is closed, okay, the potential difference across AB or across the resistor is still greater than zero or positive, but uh, the potential difference across points BC or across the inductor is now less than zero or is negative. Okay, here are the uh, further explanation. Okay, for case letter E, for either arrangement of the switches, current through the big R or resistor R is from A to B, meaning A is always at a higher potential. The current denoted by small letter I through the inductor is from B to C and is considered increasing. So the self-induced EMF opposes this increase, all right, based on Lenz's law. And this self-induced EMF is directed from C to B, which means that B is at a higher potential. That's the reason why our answer for describing the potential across BC 
in case letter A is that B sub BC is still positive. Alright? Now, for uh, case letter B, when the switch S1 is now open, but switch S2 is closed, we say that the current through the inductor is still flowing from B to C, but it's now decreasing. All right, the current is now decreasing in magnitude. So the EMF is directed from B to C, and that makes point C at a higher potential. That's why our answer for case letter B is that the potential across BC or across the inductor is less than zero or considered negative. Moving on to question number two. An inductor with an inductance of 2.50 Henry and a resistance of 8.00 ohms is connected to the terminals of a battery with an EMF of 6.00 volts and with negligible internal resistance. Questions. Letter A. Find the initial rate of increase of current in the circuit. Letter B. Find the rate of increase of current at the instant when the current is 0 0.500 ampere. Question letter C. Find the current 0 0.250 seconds after the circuit is closed. And question letter D. Find the final steady state current. Alright, so in answering uh, question letter A, we base it from our definition of uh, the self-induced EMF, which is uh, determined in terms of uh, the self-inductance capital L with a negative, all right, multiplied by the change in current per unit time, delta I over delta T also is called the rate of change of current. So, um, to determine the initial rate of increase of the current in the circuit, all right, we make use of this formula. Okay, uh, the rate of increase of current is denoted by dI over dt, meaning the derivative of i divided by the derivative of the time t, which is determined by just dividing the amount of the EMF induced denoted by epsilon over the amount of the self-inductance capital L. So substituting, okay, the amount of induced self-induced EMF is 6 volts or 6.00 volt divided by uh, the inductance which is 2.50 Henry. All right, so the result is um, the initial rate of increase of current, right, di over dt is equal to 2.40 amperes per second. So that's the answer to question letter A. Our solution to question letter B, which is finding the rate of increase of the current at an instant when the current is equal to 0.500 amperes. So we use the formula epsilon minus IR divided by the inductance L. Substituting, we have 6.00 volt minus 0.500 amperes multiplied by the resistance 8.00 ohms, okay, all over 2.50 Henry. Doing our math, we will get this value for the rate of increase in current, all right, at an instant when the current is equal to 0 0.500 amperes. And this value of the rate 
of increase in the current is equal to 0 0.800 amperes per second. Now, for question letter C, we are asked to find the amount of current after the switch has been closed. Okay, at an instant, T is equal to 0 0.250 seconds. Okay, and we use that, we use this formula to find for that current. But before, before doing that, we will first define an important concept here known as time constant tau. The Greek letter tau represents this time constant, which is just the amount of the inductance big L divided by the amount of resistance big R. So the volume for tau in this problem, L over R, is just equal to 2.50 Henry divided by 8.00 ohms, or the time constant tau is equal to 0 0.313 seconds. We'll come back to that after we calculate for the value of the current in letter C. All right? Before we proceed in finding the current, small letter I, we will first determine the power, the Euler's number, R over L times T. So that is equal to 8.00 ohm divided by um, 2.50 Henry times the time of 0 0.250 seconds and we will get a value equal to 0 0.800 so that we can now express the Euler's number which is 2.718 raised to the negative 0 0.800 power and with the help of your scientific calculator that value is equal to 0 0.449 so we are now ready to Calculate for the current I at an instant T equals 0 0.250 seconds. We just substitute 6.00 volt divided by 8.00 ohms, by the way, is the amount of the steady current or the maximum current uh, in the circuit. Alright? Then we multiply it by 1 minus the number that we calculate here, 0 0.449. Okay, and doing our math, again, we will find that the amount of that current I is equal to 0 0.413 amperes. This is uh, the amount of current from the time the circuit was closed to a time of uh, T equals 0 0.250 seconds. So this is uh, the amount of current from 0, it has now increased to 0 0.413 amperes. Alright, before we proceed analyzing uh, our answer, let's first proceed to question letter D. And question letter D is simply asking for the steady current uh, big I epsilon over R based on Ohm's law. So we get 6.00 volt divided by 8.00 ohm. The value for the steady current is 0 0.750 amperes. Okay. Now, looking at the graph that we have here, uh, the current versus time for the growth of current in an RL circuit with an EMF in series. All right. So, you will see here a curve. A curve that is at the start of the time is increasing very rapidly but as time passes the rate of increased current becomes smaller and smaller until uh, the corresponding current is now getting uh, st more steady approaching the value of big I which is 0 0.750 amperes now, at this point equivalent to one time constant or one tau which is just L over R, all right, we have the corresponding amount of current, okay, which when calculated, uh, we will be able to get the value of the current at that time equivalent to one tau or one time constant, all right, and that will be 
using also the relationship between the uh, steady current big I and uh, the number 1 minus the reciprocal of the Euler's number. So, using that, okay, we will find that the amount of current exactly at 1 tau or 1 time constant, all right, after the uh, switch has been closed, the value of the current is equal to 0 0.474 amperes, which is when compared to the calculated current at an instant of 0 0.250 seconds is not very far, all right? 0 0.413 compared to 0 0.474 amperes, which supports our description of the way the uh, the curve, all right, changes with time, all right? Where, where we said that uh, the rate of increase in the current okay, is such that it changes rapidly at the start and then as time passes okay, the rate of increase in the current becomes smaller and smaller okay so uh, we describe this uh, change in the rate of the amount of current as a function of time as the growth rate growth rate of the current all right which is described here as shown in this graph. It is exponential. Question number three. This is our last question. In the circuit shown, the EMF epsilon is equal to 12.0 volts. And the resistance, big R, is equal to 18.0 ohms. And the inductance, big L, equals 37.5 milli Henry. Switch S1 has been closed for a long time and switch S2 is open. Now, at time equals zero, you open switch S1 and close switch S2. Question is, at time equals 0 0.700 millisecond, find letter A, the current, letter B, the rate of change of the current, and letter C, the amount of energy stored in the inductor. Before we have our computation, let's first analyze the graph of current I versus the time T for the decay of current in an RL circuit. So as shown in this curve or in this graph, we notice that the rate of decrease is so rapid at the start. And as time passes, this rate of decrease current becomes slower and slower right so it is also exponential and after a time equal to the time constant or one tau which is also the amount of inductance divided by the amount of resistance that's one time constant uh, we can describe the the current to be just uh, 1 over the Euler's number okay, multiplied by the initial current. In other words, the current after one time constant is just uh, 1 over the Euler's number multiplied by the initial current I0. Also, we say that whenever the current decreases from the maximum value I to zero, the inductor actually acts as a source that can supply a total amount of energy equal to the energy that is stored, all right? 
which is one half the inductance capital L and the square of the current. All right, and this is the amount of energy that will be supplied to the external circuit, such as the resistor. In the case of the energy that flows into a resistor, whenever a current passes through it, whether the current is steady or constant or varying, this energy is dissipated in the form of heat, I squared times R. But in the case of uh, an ideal zero resistance inductor, this energy, all right, flows only into the inductor when the current is increasing, all right, where it is stored and not dissipated in the inductor. So that when the switch of the circuit is open, then the current begins to decay. All right, and that's uh, an indication that the energy stored in the inductor is being released to the resistor, okay, while the current is decreasing. Our solution to question that you A, we are asked to find the current. Uh, small letter i, and that is, or that can be determined using the formula i naught, the original current, multiplied by the Euler's number raised to negative r over l times t. First, we determine the value of the i naught, or the initial amount of current, just by dividing the EMF 12.0 volts divided by the resistance 18.0 ohms and we get the value for the initial current 0 0.667 amperes we also determine first the uh, power of the Euler's number r over l times the given time of 7.00 raised to the negative 4 seconds so we just multi or divide the uh, value of the resistance 18.0 ohm divided by the value of the inductance 3.70 times 10 to the negative 2 henry and then multiplied by the given time 7.00 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds we will get that number which is 0 0.341 and we can now therefore express the Euler's number 2.718 raised to negative 0 0.341 and with the help of your scientific calculator that value is equal to 0 0.711 and moving on to the calculation for the current small letter i we simply multiply the value of the i naught which is 0 0.667 amperes multiplied by what we got here uh, 0 0.711 and we will get the value for the current i this is at the instant T equals 7.00 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds. The current is equal to 0 0.47 for amperes. Next, question letter B. We're going to determine uh, the rate of decrease in the current, di over dt, at the same instant of 7.00 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds. So we just use the formula. Uh, I or small letter I representing the current that we calculated here in letter A multiplied with the resistance big R divided by the inductance capital L. Uh, to emphasize that the current is decreasing, we put a negative sign. Right? And when we substitute, all right, the value for the computed I or small I. 0 0.47 ampere multiplied by the resistance 18.0 ohms and divided by the inductance 3.70 times 10 to the negative 2 henry we will get the value of the rate of decrease of the current equal to negative 231 amperes per second all right so that's our answer to question letter b and finally question letter c we are asked to determine the amount of energy that is stored in the inductor 
represented here by the capital letter U, which is just equal to one half of uh, the given inductance and the square of the calculated current at that instant t equals 7.00 times 10 to the negative 4 seconds. So substituting, we get 1 half multiplied by the given inductance, 3.70 raised to the negative 2 uh, Henry, and then the square of the calculated current 0 0.474 ampere, that will be squared. And doing our math, the amount of energy stored in the inductor at that instant 7.00 times 10 to the negative per second is equal to 4.16 to 3 significant digits raised to the negative 3 joules. So these are the answers to uh, question number 3. And that's it. We are done with our uh, tutorial. Thank you very much as usual for your indulgence. Thank you very much for watching. Please follow me in my FB page and please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.